You're listening to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcast on the development of brain-computer interface technology. What if others could read your mind? Systems that allow the direct interfacing of the human brain with computers or robots are inching closer to reality. But their most important applications may be different from those envisaged by science fiction. Stay with us. Remember the six million dollar man? In this popular series, scientists reconstructed the body of crash victim Steve Austin thanks to bionic implants he could control with his mind. With the rapid development of brain-computer interface technology, what was pure fantasy in the 1970s may no longer be confined to science fiction, and may even transform our understanding of life as we know it. Brain-computer interface technology, or BCI, enables direct communication between the brain and an external device. It has been used to restore motor and sensory capacities which have been lost after a stroke or trauma, but how does it work? Such communication is made possible via an implant in the brain or the skull. With deep brain stimulation, a sort of brain pacemaker sends electrical impulses to specific parts of the brain, helping to restore capabilities lost after a traumatic incident. In addition, this communication can be used for the treatment of memory-related disorders such as Parkinson's disease, dystonia and major depression. Another way to do this, avoiding surgery, is with external devices. Although the signal quality may be weaker than with implanted devices, this technology has been used effectively, for example, to control prosthetic hands. But what other uses may the technology have? Well, there are many other domains where BCI technology can make a difference. For example, while many deaf and hearing impaired people in the world already use cochlear implants, by 2020 the majority of children with hearing loss will have access to these implants before the age of five. Brain pacemakers are already used by over 100,000 patients suffering from Parkinson's and other movement disorders. And in the future, they may also be used to treat diseases such as schizophrenia or Alzheimer's. And as BCI technologies become smaller, more effective and easier to use, for example thanks to wireless interface devices, the list of potential applications will only grow. In fact, there is already a commercially available, portable and affordable device that records activity in the brain and transmits it to computers or smartphones via USB connections. Recent experiments have also allowed two people at a distance to communicate with each other telepathically. But are we ready for this? Well, that's certainly not without debate. BCI raises numerous questions linked to ethics, responsibility and privacy. For instance, who has access to what and under which circumstances? How is a patient's consent determined? And who is to blame if something goes wrong? There is also the question of medical necessity, as implants considered by some as medical may be seen by others as cosmetic. Steve Austin was rebuilt to have enhanced strength, speed and vision, in other words, to be better than he was before. But is the idea of giving people enhanced powers as desirable as it seems? Well, while few would deny an Alzheimer's patient the opportunity to remember more, an enhanced memory might prevent us from overcoming personal traumas. Similarly, technologies to help the hearing impaired are controversial because if cochlear implants were to eradicate deafness, they might also eradicate the unique language and culture of the deaf community. So this is one reason why the deaf community does not always support technologies to enable hearing. There are also concerns related to privacy and surveillance, fears of a thought police as described by Orwell in his book 1984. Fortunately, while functional implants are increasingly common, mind reading and indeed mind control remain firmly in the realm of science fiction, at least for now. The commercialization of BCI technologies also raises challenging legal questions linked to data protection, safety, human dignity or mental integrity. For example, should BCI devices become widespread, how could we ensure that private information about personal preferences is not extracted from individuals without their permission? Well, precisely because of the potential of this human integrated technology to cause irreversible damage to our privacy and autonomy, legal safeguards need to be discussed at the earliest stages. Lawmakers also need to ensure that methods of data transmission are robust and secure. And coming back to the question of necessity, legal and ethical criteria need to be defined to make a clear distinction between medical applications of brain-computer interface technology and non-therapeutic enhancement applications, whose aim goes beyond restoring to actually increasing the performance of certain body parts. Could this lead to the emergence of a new community of enhanced humans? That's one of the questions scientists and writers like to speculate about, but what's clear is that the line between reality and fiction is getting thinner. You are listening to the European Parliamentary Research Service Podcasts. 